So we're going to start off with these randomized controlled uh, data. And these are my conflicts. So once a benchmark, this is the control study. This was a registry, a retrospective uh, registry, where they collected all uh, suture-based closures of large bore um, uh, access with either pro, pro styles or pro close proglides or pro stars. And they compared uh, both uh, technologies. Basically, um, the proglides seem to be better in this multi-center uh, registry than uh, the pro star. But look at the vascular complication rate. Any vascular complication rate was 20%. And also of interest, the use of stenting was 5%. The use of bailout surgery was also 2%. So we can use that as a benchmark and to help interpret the data that uh, we get now from randomized controlled trials. There is also a large meta-analysis on the use of MANTA. And as a matter of fact, MANTA is probably the best studied large bore closure device on the market. We have three uh, larger registries, prospective registries. And if we pull the data, we end up with almost 900 patients. The time to hemostasis was quite short, only uh, half a minute. Major vascular complication rate around 4%. Minor vascular complication rate, again, less than 5%. So if you compare that with the benchmark of suture-based closure, that is definitely less than 20%. Bailout surgery or covered stenting was required in 3.6%. Some, a number that is more or less reflective of what was uh, reported in the control. And operator uh, experience was not associated with excess complications in those registries. And that is important because it attests to the ease of adoption of this technology. There are two randomized controlled trials comparing two proglides versus MANTA. There is the MESH trial, which was a joint effort from Rotterdam and Toulouse. And then there was the uh, co choice closure that was a study in Germany in three sites. In MESH TAVI, more than 200 patients were one-to-one -one randomized to two per, per close proglides or the MANTA closure device. And these were uh, the results. So basically, you had no significant difference in access site complications between the two treatment arms, although numerically we had more complications with MANTA. What was more of interest, I think, from that trial was that if you look at um, if you would need additional maneuvers, what would it be? And that's on the far right of the screen. You'll see that um, additional closure devices were required with per close pro style and in a significant number of cases. Whereas we did not have the opportunity of a bailout closure device with MANTA because there is no wire left in place when we use this technology. That said, in the majority of cases, if you have a uh, no hemostasis with a MANTA, the best remedy is prolonged manual compression. There were some limitations with MASH. Uh, it, the sample size was not appropriate. We had fewer ex uh, complications than expected, so our study was underpowered. There was also, also no systematic use of protamine, and we may this, want to discuss this later on with the panel. Is this a requirement for uh, the use of MANTA? And uh, also there was an unbalanced experience with the two techniques because the operators had years of experience with sutures and only one or two years of experience with MANTA. Obviously that played a role in the outcome. Then there is the choice closure. This is a German uh, study. Three sites participated. More than 500 patients were included. And basically they saw more or less the same thing. Um, if you can see, the, uh, what was important was that um, uh, the majority of patients received protamine, which is of note and which was different from uh, the MASH trial. And also, um, you, if you look at additional vascular closure devices, we saw a similar uh, thing as in MASH. More additional closure devices were used in the suture-based arm. So additional closure devices could be either angioseals or uh, another per-close uh, proglide. The failure, uh, the, the, there was also the, the definition of vascular closure device failure was not the same for mesh and choice closure. That said, um, vascular access was most commonly obtained using 
digital subtraction and geography. And that is another important difference between the two trials. In MASH, we were using ultrasound guided access. In choice closure, it was angio guided access in the majority of cases. And this is definitely also something that we may want to uh, discuss uh, later on with the panelists. So in terms of outcome in uh, choice closure, there were more complications, more access side complications and predominantly minor access side complications uh, using uh, the Manta device. But basically this was in line with what we reported in MESH. Uh, it is notable that the number of complications were higher in choice closure than in MESH. So uh, we can also discuss that, whether that has had something to do with um, experience of the participating sites. And this figure typically demonstrates that again, when you need a bailout procedure, it will be a covered stent or surgery with MESH, uh, with uh, Manta, and it will be manual compression or uh, an additional closure device in a significant number of cases when you use suture-based closure. Also, choice closure trial had limitations. There was no ultrasound guided access, which is important because you want to have, per instruction for use, an anterior wall puncture. You want to stay away from the femoral bifurcation and you want to avoid focal calcium anteriorly when you want to use a Manta device. Only the 18 French Manta device was used. Obviously, there are two sizes. There's a 14 and an 18. And with uh, 14 French systems, there's no point in upscaling to 18 French when you can use a 14 French Manta. There was a systematic protamine use in all but six patients. That's not really a limitation. And there was, again, unbalanced experience with the two uh, techniques.